Throws at the end of uh, at the end of the uh, packet header. Again, just pat it up in the in the in the extension headers. Um, TTL for some reason now we call it a hop limit. It is exactly the same thing. Pat the router looks at the darn thing and says, "Hey, is this greater than zero? Okay, I'll fling it again, decrement, and send it on its way." Um, what this all comes down to is we're taking a lot of a lot of the work off of the the intermediate hops in the router and saying, "Hey, end client." You want to do internet black hole protection because I'm not going to do it for you anymore. It, it's no longer it's no longer a good idea on the client's side to detect the networks that decided, hey, we're going to do all of our internal links in our FC 1918 space, or we're going to filter all ISP uh, ICMP because I think ping of death is still a thing, and I'm afraid of ICMP because I don't know what it really means. Um, Windows XP service pack. Three introduced black hole detection, and people still don't have it and still don't get it right. This is kind of amazing. Most Unix systems have had it for God only knows how long. And now we're basically saying at a protocol level, yeah, you're the client, it's your problem to figure out what the path MTU is. We're not going to help you. We're not going to fragment this shit for you. If you want to frag it, do it on your own. Um, well, something that's interesting that is new is the flow label. It sort of takes the place of identification. Identification was mostly used for identifying frags in v4 packets. Flow label is actually, the concept is to identify individual packets that are all part of the same family. And what the router is supposed to do, and I don't know if anybody's actually built this or not, the theory is you take, say, a real-time conversation, audio, VoIP. You mark all of them with the same flow label so that the router says, well, I've got equal cost routing to this thing, I'm going to round robin them, I'm going to send one this way, one this way, one this way, one this way, and then they're all going to get reassembled by the codec at the other end, and it's going to sound like a satanic sheep talking in tongues. <laughs> the theory is that this will tell the router, keep them all together. Yes, I know that you would like to load balance this or round robin it or whatever, but these are all part of a bigger thing. Please keep them together. That's kind of cool. Did, I'm sorry, did you have a question or are you stretching? He was stretching. Okay. Um, I think that's actually the end of what IPv6 gets well. Honey, next please. Okay, so we've talked about the good, we've talked about the bad, and now we're going to talk about the ugly. And yes, that's Clint Eastwood and the good, the bad, and the ugly. In case you didn't know that. I'm showing my age at this point. Okay, so I have come to the conclusion that there are three kinds of IPv6 users in the tech world. And I'm not talking end users, I'm talking actual technicians. Two of them are illustrated here, the other one's in front of you in the dress. <laughs> uh, yes, I went with the old school Chicken Little because I've never seen the modern CGI animated Chicken Little and I refuse to accept it just because that's Chicken Little to me, okay? These are everything from the guys on the internet screaming doom and gloom. Ah, we're out of IPv4 space! Everything's coming crashing down! Yes. I literally wrote last July an article called IPv6, The Sky Really Is Falling, so... <laughs> so it's relevant to me! <laughs> you know, I think I read that. <laughs> that really, really rings a bell. <laughs> and, um... I'm I, probably the cause of this slide. No, 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 no. No, me Googling anything about IPv6 and being in, and being basically inundated with, well, the first thing you should do is set up a GRE tunnel to Hurricane Electric. But I'll get to that. <laughs> Seriously, if that is your, um, if that's your first step in, in something you're thinking about writing, please don't write it. It's already been written 10,000 times. And I didn't write that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um... But the, the other side of the thing is all the way down to the Aaron Twitter account that says, we have 12% left of a slash eight. It's doom and gloom. This is not how you sell this to management. We're all techs here. We know this. We know that this is a problem. We know that we have to deal with this. The problem is IPv6 doesn't make you any money until, it's, until V4 problems are causing you to lose money. And... To the average C-level exec, that does not make any sense whatsoever. They think that there's some kind of band-aid we can throw on this, they'll take five minutes. Um, when you come at them with this approach, you're alienating them. The, the example that is in my speaker notes that I actually remember 
is the security industry. I am, I am, as you may have read, I didn't say it, but I, I put it on my slides, I am a security aficionado. I am not a security researcher. I don't debug malware. I just deal with problems. I respond to CVEs. I patch systems. I give a shit about security, but I am not an expert. I'm definitely not an expert, and anybody who tells you they're a security expert is full of themselves, or lying, or an idiot, or whatever. Anyways, um, the security industry noticed probably about five or six years ago that walking up to corporate level execs and going, you gotta secure this! Well, why? Because it's insecure! It's gonna get out! It doesn't work. It does not work at all. You have, to, you have to frame this in some kind of context. How much is this going to cost us in the next year if we don't do something about it? Yo. How many credit cards on it? Take that number times $30. <laughs> That's actually pretty much it. That's before the SEC shows up. <laughs> well, how many, else, how many other people here know how much the uh, credit card industry actually loses in fraud in a year? It's no, it's actually about five billion dollars. No, the credit card that industry does it. The credit card processors, uh, the yeah. banks, the banks, banks zero the credit Visa don't lose. Yeah, but basically, the people that are losing money, it is still so heinously profitable, profitable to just eat this that they just keep right on going. This is the kind of mindset we're going up against, deploying this further forward because. You're not losing any money not deploying MPV6. In fact, you're spending a shitload of money. Nuxie, what happened the other day at Arbor Networks? <coughs> Weren't you just telling me you tried to light IPv6 and all hell oh, broke loose? The, 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 the Juniper VPN we have uh, doesn't do split routing for IPv6, so all of a sudden everybody on the YouTube um, the VPN had all their YouTube traffic hijacked through work. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, didn't make them any money, probably cost them something. The other kind of user is um, the ones that I deal with on a daily basis, and uh, they literally have their heads in the ground. Um, this goes back to a variety of uh, things that I think are a problem. One among them is this notion, oh, there's so many IP addresses, it's so big. I really think this scares people into this mindset. I think we need to stop saying this. And we need, I think we need to break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. It's like the, um, how many people are familiar with the scaled uh, draw, uh, drawings of the Earth compared to other planets in the solar system all the way up to Betelgeuse and Pollux and everything? Yeah, you can't draw the Earth as one pixel and make it make sense next to Betelgeuse because it's bigger than this hotel. When you talk to things in scale with people at these levels, at the numbers we're talking about, people just panic, they run away. Um, case in point, five years ago we got our IPv6 allocation from Eric, and first thing I did was I lit all the core routers on the network, got, got the backbone working, <coughs> then I lit our mail servers, then I got my desk working, <laughs> then I got the office wireless working, and then I went to the public facing web servers, because as an ISP, for some reason people think we want to host your website. And, you know, we're, we're an eyeball network, so all of my traffic is download, and I am always looking for ways to use that upload that I'm paying for and not using. So, we host websites. All automated system. All you had to do was call in and say, hey, I want this site. We put it in the billing system. It builds out. You have V4 and V6 connectivity. You don't have to do anything. It's done for you. I put your website on the V6 internet. I was inundated over the next three to four months with calls from IT techs panicked that they were getting responses to Quad A records. <laughs> I need you to take this off! We haven't examined IPv6 in our corporate network! Totally terrified! Didn't know what to do about this. You don't have to do anything. If you don't have IPv6 connectivity, you'll just go to the v4 site. There was nothing broken. Nobody ever called and said, my site is broken. They all said, why did you turn on IPv6? We don't understand that. We're scared of it. It's a security hole or whatever. And they demanded we turn it off. So here we are five years later, and over half of my customers on my web hosting have demanded that I disable IPv6 for no reason whatsoever, other than sheer lack of understanding, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I swear, it's like caffeine and alcohol in the, this industry. We need it to survive. We need to be uncertain about something, and right now it's V6. 
and like I said, the other the other uh, group is uh, guys like me in the dress, and basically everybody in this room. Because if you cared about, if you didn't care about V6, you probably wouldn't be here. Okay. Oh yes. Here we are. <sighs> I don't want to knock on Hurricane Electric because Hurricane Electric has done a lot for IPv6 awareness. But what the fuck does IPv6 certified sage actually mean? Yes, that is actually my image. I did not Photoshop that. It's they sent you a free T-shirt once. I told them I didn't want it. <laughs> because I know people who've got the free T-shirt, and I swear, they walk around with that thing on like it's the Congressional Medal of Honor. <laughs> like, this is stolen from IPv6.he.net. This is what Sage means. This is what you have to do to prove that you are an IPv6 Sage. I don't see anything in here about dynamic routing. I don't see anything in here about prefix delegation. I don't see anything in here about how do you get this working for your mom. Because I got a mother. You know, rumor has it I was, you know, assembled from spare, you know, male and female parts. But I do technically have a mother, and I don't know how to get her on V6. Then again, she's not a customer of my service because she lives outside my service area. But um, this is actually kind of a big point of my talk: is that we, as technicians, and our job is to push this to the rest of the planet. We need to stop resting on our laurels and thinking that just because IPv6 that we got a GRE tunnel to Hurricane Electric and passed all of these fairly basic level things that I think any junior level technician should be able to do in an hour that somehow the world is ready for V6. Um, it's really not that simple, and I don't have a lot of the answers. Yo. I'm going to also say that at this point in IPv6 deployment, going and getting an HE tunnel and being happy is less helpful than having done nothing, because what you should be doing is calling your internet service provider and saying, where in the fuck is my IPv6? Yes, I want native. Absolutely. Or at least already. At worst, RD, but you know, native would be better. I have native. Do you know what the uptake level on my network is? Less than one percent. I can tell you how many customers, not counting my own house. My boss's house has IPv6. My house has IPv6. My personal web servers, and uh, two friends of mine that are technical, that have servers co-located on my network. One who owes me a bunch of money. I say this because I went through the process with AT&T and got IPv6 numbers. Nice! That was about three days of work. Really? They sent me to tech support departments that actually had people that knew what tech support was. That's how high I got into AT&T. Yes, but <laughs> so did it cost what's the difference money? between you no. and an end user? You're a technical user. No, I'm an asshole and I'm willing to sit on your phone until you give me what the fuck I want. <laughs> yeah, but you know what IPv6 is, therefore sure. you're at least somewhat technical. How do I get this to the 10,000 users on my network who don't care what IPv6 is, they don't know what IPv6 is, they don't want to know, and this isn't like, this isn't like, hi, my, yo. Sell TV service with a new router and a new uh, box. Oh, you, mean, yeah. you know, that's actually pretty much what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that, but we're doing fiber to the home so we can do TV. The thing is, I've got 10,000 existing customers over Wi-Fi, I cannot sell them TV service. Because <sighs> Cambium Canopy does not handle multicast well, and Bob doesn't handle well. I mean, it just does a layer two broadcast and floods the entire network, and it hurts. Great last mile product. So, is that. Uber's, Uber's native has been doing native IPv6 all along? Is that really no, it's RD. So, is it? yeah, I'm not familiar. I've never, uh, I've never fucked around. Pardon my French with a Uber's uh, circuit. Yeah, Uber's is native IPv4, IPv6, RD. Uh, so you do have packet and packet encapsulation. That said, it's not a GRE tunnel, and since you're not having to go all the way over from AT&T to AG that you wanted to go, you're actually going like three routers up in what your normal trace route would be anyway. Mm -hmm. The latency increases essentially zero the time it takes it to encapsulate and unencapsulate that packet, and you have to send it with an MTU of like 14 to 50 just to be safe. It's really not that bad. No. It was pretty painless as far as things went, but you had to get a special router to do it. Yeah, yeah. Again, you you have to because, like like I was saying before, I keep uh, asking questions and statements here. Um, one big problem is we cannot say, "Hey, customer X, I'm calling you up to enable IPv6 on your home network." Why? Because you don't have IPv6 enabled. Well, what does IPv6 get me? 
Nothing that you're going to notice. Well, then why should I do it? It just has to work. And what the oh, hell just happened to my slides? Sorry. Dead battery. I apologize. Oh, sorry, if you had be six, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so far, I mean, you would drink, I know that I have a better drink. Um, <laughs> seriously, do I not have any more slides? Hey, Kim, what, what, what did my next slide look like? I don't, it oh, no, I, nobody gets to see the Ewok? <laughs> I totally have the Ewok slide where he's like, bite the pillow, I'm going in dry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was relevant. It was totally relevant. Um, how much stuff do I even have? Actually, we have like four we minutes. Got it back up. And um, it was down, it was orange. So it is You're not going to get very far. It's kind of warm away. How many does it take to fix the uh, projector? I mean, it was pretty much my big, uh, big Can I use a hammer? Um, the next slide was actually just a bunch of logos that said like D-Link and Netgear and TP-Link and everything like that. Those guys have got a horrible job ahead of them because, well, they do and ISPs do. Because you have a ton of consumer routers out there, you propose one solution, sell a new service, TV or voice or whatever, and give people a free router. Hey, there it is. So, what is the damn thing just getting claiming on its latest batch of Nighthawk routers because routers are now the elite tactical one. I'm not sure what the fuck they are. They the are Apache mounted with Sidewinder missile router. Yeah. They are IPv6 ready. I have no fucking clue what that means. Well, um, one of the first vendors I saw that was consistently deploying IPv6 enabled routers was actually D Link. And um, most D-Link routers, the unfortunate side effect is that a lot of them in the initial firmwares, the ones that went out the door, and how many customers do you think patch their firmware? Less happen. than none, it's probably a negative number. Almost, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you were just making the zero, zero. side. Yeah. It's, it's, it's painfully small. Anybody who knows how to patch their firmware on their router knows how to get their V6 working without help from their ISP. As long as the ISP Unless is you're actually... Unless you the AT&T. Well, yeah, but on my backbone, we're doing prefix delegation with DHCP V6. I have a 0% uptake right now. Literally, no one is responding to this. I have nobody on V6. And it's because you can't call a customer up and say, hey, you need to turn this feature on. It's off by default in your router. Why should I? Nothing's broken. Because for starters, one, they're, they're, then you have to talk them through it, and that's hell. Mm -hmm. I'm not even customer facing. I've been customer facing for four years now, thank God, and I still have nightmares about it. Like I said, I've been with the company since it was just the, the owner and me. And um, yeah, that meant I was tech support for a very, very, very long time. And if anybody in here is still tech support in any capacity, I feel for you. And here's a meeting off track. Um, I'm sorry. I'm the community manager for Xenos, so I literally tech support for every single open source user. Oh dear God. Forums are fun. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. A, you got to tell them how to turn it on, and B, you got to explain why they should. Exactly. Exactly. He makes a very good point. In case anybody didn't hear Nate, you got to tell them how to turn it on, and you got to explain to them why you should turn it on. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, this is my closing slide, other than the one that asked for questions. But I see everybody's moving out their camera. Mission accomplished. I put something flagrantly offensive on a slide at PenguinCon, and everybody laughed. I was afraid it was going to be like half the audience was going to walk out of the room like, what the hell is wrong with that asshole? Not after Star Wars, Star Wars 1, nothing sacred anymore. <laughs> true. True statement. Very true statement. Although I saw the previews for the new one, I'm actually pretty optimistic. I'm just assuming that, that it's going to be two and a half hours of lens flare. Well, yeah, but there'll probably be some, like, some boobs and some lasers and probably some kind of uh, like an X-Wing fighting a TIE fighter. No, they're actually going to arm the X-Wings with lens flare. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> Yo. I have an idea to get all the customer, the end users, to upgrade to V6. Why them? Have Google, Facebook, and Twitter send an ultimatum that in about 10 years they're going to switch off V4. <laughs> so, so many years. 9.9995 oh, years. 
will have this mad dash to get off of V4. Yo, which is where we're at right now. Yes. Put 40 terabytes of free porn on an IPv6 only website. Okay! Well, IPv6 porn is the yes. best lie! I know! I got IPv6 connectivity, I got my SAGE certification, and I went over to IPv6porn.com and it was like, where's all my naked ladies? <laughs> And then I realized that, you know, you don't really need IPv6 to get naked ladies, and I'm married. <laughs> Hi, honey. I just talked about me naked, indirectly, in a, in a conversation. <laughs> no, um, but no, um, ISPs, they've got a horrible part of this going forward, because I'm also done. Um, if, you're an, if you're a content provider and you aren't serving this up on v6, um, kill yourself. Because um, there's not enough lube to get it done at this point. You, you're, you've got Wicked, he's behind you, and you've got that look on his face the whole time. Um, I will say, one area where V6 adoption has been exemplary, and this is because it's actually a pretty easy problem to solve, <coughs> mobile market. Uh, your cell phone, totally V6 enabled, but you don't have to ship. None of the AT&T phones at all. Really? Nothing on AT&T's entire network. Nothing on Sprint's entire network, but Sprint still thinks LTE is spelled W-I-M-A-X. So. <laughs> Don't get me started on WiMAX. Anybody wants to talk about Layer 2 shit, especially if it goes through the air and it's spelled WiMAX, I will be the happy later. to... I will be happy to bitch endlessly. Some of these guys know my thoughts on WiMAX. The rest of you, you're welcome to find out. I've deployed it. It's horrible. It needs to die. It's the best protocol that a committee can design. <laughs> um, okay, so apparently I figured that if Verizon can do it, that AT&T could get it right. Hot damn. No, the only Verizon hasn't even gotten it right. They're iffy. The only company that's really gotten it right was T-Mobile, and that's because the uh, T-Mobile guy's Chicken Little, and he deliberately sent a broken IPv4 allocation request in for like the slash 16. <laughs> Went back to his bosses and said, they won't give us any, we have to do IPv6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why T Mobile uh, went off. Nice. Right. We'll we'll learn something new every day. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, mobile's coming along. Content providers are, well, if you're not serving it up v6, like I said. Um, last mile is the problem. If you're a technical user, you probably have v6 in some way, shape, or form. If you're an end user, how the hell do you get there? You don't care. Like I said, you can't call up an end user and say, hey, you need to buy a new router. Why? Because your router doesn't support IPv6. Well, my service isn't broken. Why do I care? Yeah? To be fair, aren't most customer per uh, first routers something that's been provided by the ISP? Mom calls up like, I want an internet, and she gets a magic black box. Like, so here's the fun part. Here is the really fun part. Um, the uptake level on that is actually less than you would think. People think, like I said, work for an ISP. I would say less than 10% of our customers buy the router that we supply. I would recommend this behavior because the routers we supply don't speak IPv6. <laughs> because that's not my department. I know we're operations. I am not, I am not field ops. And the routers that field ops sell don't know what an IPv6 address is, the firmware, it's not on the roadmap. They have no idea what this is. Why don't they just create a panic like they did with uh, HD? You know, they said, okay, if you don't upgrade your set-top box, you would not have tele. Well, this is what I was saying about yeah. the... Well, that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> idea. <laughs> I think I'm out of time. Anybody want to see any more questions out of me, I'll be around. I think I have to get the heck off this, uh, yeah, yeah, they won't be leaving now. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.